are now listening to Regular Guys Podcast. What is up, everybody? Welcome to the very first episode of the Regular Guys Podcast. We're so glad you could join us. We're excited. We're here to talk everything sports, NFL, NBA, a little bit of hype. Again, we know you have many podcasts, many outlets to choose from. ESPN, ESPN2, ESPN The Ocho, ESPN Deportes, if that's your thing. But we're glad that you came here to be with us. I'm your host. I'm joined here by Maddie Ice, too. What's going on, guys? We welcome you to uh, our first official episode, and uh, we look forward to you being here with us as we go along this journey. And I'm also here with my boy, Jake. What's up, guys? Appreciate it. Um, hope you guys like it. Um, stay tuned for more of what we have coming coming in the future. Yeah, Jake, uh, Jake speaks Spanish, so if you got any questions, man, send them in. Send them in in Spanish. <laughs> Matt's got uh, Samoan on lock. Maybe this we can guy. get uh, maybe we can get the Rock on here for a guest episode. That'd be sweet, huh? That would be sweet. I'm not even on front. That would be sweet. I doubt it's gonna happen. This week we're talking divisions in the NFL. Specifically, we're gonna break down the AFC West. Talk a little bit about what they've done this past year, what they got coming ahead. We also got some off-topic subjects in the NFL. We're still talking divisions in the NBA, too. Although divisions don't really matter that much. Maybe we'll talk a little bit about that, the conferences. And we got a little something special in store as well in the hype. Space Jam. Now, I grew up with Space Jam, fellas. Uh, I've seen this new trailer. Man, I'm ready to discuss it with you guys. So we got a lot here. We got a lot to dive in on. Let's just, let's just jump right in then, fellas. What do you think? The NFL. So... The goal, of course, is to break down the entire league. We're going to go division by division. Uh, no doubt we'll get your favorite team in there, too. We'll open it up to questions. If you're on YouTube, drop some comments down. If you're on our Insta, tell us what your favorite team is. Maybe we'll do their division next week. But we're going to start off with the AFC West. Uh, I think it's best to start with the Chiefs, huh? They, they won the division last year. So it all starts with the champs. Jake, what do you... What are you seeing on the on the Chiefs here? So um, what I like about the Chiefs is they made some pretty good signings on the offensive line. They signed a Joe Thune, which was probably the best offensive lineman in the free agent class this year. Um, and as we saw with the Super Bowl, that's something the Chiefs were lacking. Um, they let go of Jake Matthews. Um, Matt Schwartz was also released. So they had some holes in their offensive line they had to fill. And they were able to get Kyle Long out of retirement also and sign him. Um, that's going to be a really nice piece. You got to protect Mahomes. Seize your um, billion-dollar quarterback. <laughs> um, he's going to be making a lot of money. You got to protect him. And you got to, you know, maximize his youth, keep him healthy, and get some, you know, more wins, more championships. They lost Sammy Watkins as well. Granted, Sammy Watkins is only good for the week one. He'll put up like 10, 10 catches, 350 yards, three touchdowns, and then he's hurt and he's out for six weeks. And then he comes back sporadically throughout the year. But it was still a guy that Mahomes still looked to to throw. Um, let's see. I also think probably adding a wide receiver in the draft this year. You have Tyreek Hill. He'll bomb anybody. He'll destroy any defense. We know that. But if teams start triple teaming him, yeah, you got Kelsey, but Kelsey's also on the wrong side of 30. He's getting up there. So I would say, you know, draft somebody. Miko Hardman isn't being developed the right way. He had a great he had a great game in the AFC Championship game, but then after that, didn't do well. So those are the moves that I would make. Just, you know, looking from a fan's point, point of view. So let me ask you then. You mentioned the O-line. We saw it in the Super Bowl. They were trashed. You think with these O-line additions, Joe Thune, like you said, are they the favorites to repeat as division champ? Division champs, probably. Um, but going back to the Super Bowl, 
there's a lot of good teams in the AFC this year. The Bills are no joke as well. They added, you know, low-key players that could definitely help them. Uh, division, yes, but we'll see if they repeat. Joe Thune is great, but Kyle Long wasn't playing for a whole season. So let's see how he actually is. So we'll see, but definitely division champs. Here's the other thing to consider, too. Patty Mahomes, he's a dad now, right? He's, I don't know, he's not sleeping as much as he used to. He's got a brand-new baby at the house. <laughs> Thankfully, the season isn't right now, though. But I get what you, I see what you mean, though. Um, I agree. I agree with Jake and a lot of that. It, because you have these big name guys on your team that are taking up a lot of your salary. Yeah, we saw them to start off the off season. A lot of those guys restructured their contract, but for the most part, you're going to have to draft well. I mean. They had guys like Juju that were considering. Um, he turned down to go back to Pittsburgh. I don't know why. Um, apparently, T.Y. Hilton was always was also a part of that list of guys. So the fact you couldn't lure one guy in, and then like you know Jake mentioned, you lose Sammy. Um, you bring back Demarcus Robinson, but he's not really doing much for you. And Nicole Hardman is on Madden. He's great. I mean, we all know on Madden. He's the next coming of you know, Tyreek Hill, but in real life, he he shows flashes. So um, I, I'd agree definitely with uh, with Jake also and them repeating as division champs. You know, while we're with you, Matt, let's jump down into the bottom of the division, the Broncos. The Broncos went 5-11 and 11 last year. We saw Drew Locke, first full campaign as the starter. Of course, he battled some injuries too, but um, – How are they trending? Looks like they're trending up. Are they trending down? They're going to repeat as the seller team in the AFC West? What are we looking at, Matt? So I would say the Denver Broncos are a quarterback away from giving the Kansas City Chiefs a run for the division. Yes, a quarterback away. Um, if you look at the roster on paper, it, it's great. They might have one of the best receiver rooms Coming up, I mean, you have Corlin Sutton, uh, Jerry Judy, Tim Patrick, Noah Fan. So, I mean, they're loaded. You got KJ Hamler, who's a fourth fourth guy, but he's somewhat of a burner. Um, Drew Locke is your biggest question mark. If you go into the season and Drew Locke is still your guy, you are setting yourself up for a potential another 5-11 and 11 season. You have to, in my eyes, in this draft, and from what I've seen, the Falcons are looking to, if the price is right, you know, trade that fourth pick uh, in the first round. You got to go all in. This quarter, this quarterback draft is, it's oozing with potential franchise guys. So you're, so you're saying that Broncos have to move up then. Broncos pick at nine right now. You don't think anyone's going to be left at nine at quarterback? I don't. I think the first three picks are going to be quarterback. You're going to have Lawrence. You're going to have Wilson. And then you're going to either have um, Mac Jones or Justin Fields. And the Falcons could also end up taking another quarterback because, you know, Matty Ice is on the wrong side of 30. I think he's like 35, 36. They will need – then they got a new head coach. He's going to want his guy to help groom. I mean, what are the better way to learn from Matty Ice than anybody else? So it, you're going to have to. If you love a guy, they say don't wait. If you wait, then you're not going to get him. If you feel strongly about a guy, you definitely got to move up for him. So let's just run through it then. Let's say a trade is unlikely or they can't somehow finagle their way up in the top five and they're stuck rolling with Drew Locke. What's the Broncos record end of the year with Drew Locke? He's still got weapons now. He's still got KJ Hamler. He's still got Jerry Judy out there. He's still got Noah Fant. He's still got... Melvin Gordon in the backfield. What uh, what's their record with you luck? I'm gonna say five and twelve because their other second big need is that interior offensive line. Um, it ranked 25th, the whole entire offensive line as a unit according to uh, Pro Football Focus. That's that's not gonna get it done. Not especially when you're facing guys like um, Joey Bosa. And the uh, the front that the the Chiefs have, um, and it sucks because they they've added good talent on defense, 
Um, you get Ronald uh, Darby, and then you get uh, Kyle Fuller from the from the Bears, and you get Von Miller back to to pair up with um, uh, Chubb on the other side. So, again, on paper, it's good. They're they're just a quarterback away, and maybe one interior offensive lineman, a center or a guard away from really contending. So, I, but if I had to give you a prediction, I'm gonna go five and twelve. So here's my concern with the Broncos. The Broncos' new GM is George Payton. George Payton used to be in my favorite team, the Minnesota Vikings. And you know the Vikings' record with drafting quarterbacks. They're not known to develop quarterbacks. Dante Culpepper was probably the last good quarterback that they picked. They've had some guys. Of course, they had five Sam Bradford cousins that they've traded for. They've been decent, but but our record for picking quarterbacks hasn't been good. It might be a concern that, uh, that George Payton is going to strike out. Now going to the other side of the division, the Raiders, it seems like they have their guy, right, in Derek Carr, or do they, Jake? Um, I would say so. You'd be surprised on the season he had. When I was looking at these stats, it really shocked me. So that makes me think it's not Carr's fault. I don't know if it's play calling. I don't know if it's defense. I don't watch a lot of the Raiders games, but from the stats that he had, it was a solid enough season. He threw for 4,103 yards, 27 touchdowns, nine picks, and he had a really solid passer rating of 101.4. So that shows car is not the issue. So then what is the issue? That's something that we have to see. We have to figure out what's going to go on with the Raiders. You're stuck with the coach. You signed him to a 10-year deal. He's also, you know, helping, he's co-GM, if you want to say. He's one of the few head coaches that has a really good, you know, sway on what the GM does. So let's see what happens. They lost a lot on their defense, I feel, with Joyner. He signed with the Jets, which I love that. I love that signing. But that's a safety that is pretty solid and you lost him. Aguilar had an actual really good season with them. And he cashed it in, signed with the Pats. So all you're stuck with is rugs because Terrell Williams, they released him. So what are, what are you going to do as your pass catcher? You have Waller. He's good. But if Waller is the only guy that you're passing to, because rugs had, you know, his spots during the season where he was great. And then there was other games where you're like, where's rugs? I thought he was a speedster. He's supposed to be the next Tyree kill. He's not, I, we don't see it. What's going on. So if you're only throwing to Waller, they're going to pick up on it, and Derek Carr is going to be stuck having a great season but not doing anything in the postseason because they don't even get to the postseason. So we have to see what's up with that. They signed Willie Sneed. Um, that's an okay pickup, as we can see how he was with the Ravens. It's kind of eh, mediocre. Played great with the, with the Saints, but, you know, he actually had a quarterback throwing to him, not a running back. That's a take for another, for another day. Oh, man. But, um, I just I don't see what's gonna what's gonna happen with the Raiders. You know, they signed three offensive linemen that aren't huge signings. They're great, but they're not like names that stick that stake out. So it's like we'll see. I don't think it's Carr's fault. That's my big take on it. So it it seemed like you were shying away from saying it, but kind of beating around the bush. Do you think this is Gruden's fault? I mean, there was no questions on the Raiders before Gruden. When Gruden came in, they are like, oh, man, we're getting a Super Bowl winning coach. He's going to come in. Expectations are high. Uh, and what's going on? Matt? Expectations were so high. Yeah, and I also Matt, think – you agree with that? <clears throat> Is I it do. Gruden? I really do. Um, I think he's just also been out of the game for too long. He was – don't get me wrong. I mean, you show respect. He, he helped the Tampa Bay Bucks win the Super Bowl. But if I were the owner of the, the Raiders, I'm not bringing you back. Yeah, I, I, the 10-year deal, that's cool. But to make you GM, co-GM, whatever, to me, that's too much. That's too much on his plate. Um, he's been there, this would be three years, I, I believe. In my eyes, if there isn't a playoff berth this year, he is on the hot seat. And I honestly... They just have too many questions. The they lost a lot of guys on on, on the offensive line. Um, 
and then your your pass rush is still a question. Yeah, you sign Unique and Gakwe, but Unique's kind of like hot and cold. He's good and he's not. I mean, he bounced around until it seems like five different teams last year. He was on the on the uh, the Jags, then he got booted to the the, the Vikings. Then Don't he got bring it to up. The um. I mean, it's all good though. You guys, you guys got rid of him when you can. I mean, he didn't really do much for the Ravens either. So it's it's a lot of questions. And if he was supposed to be as good as advertised, he should go into each season where it's not as many questions. But it seems like every year we go into another season, the same questions are there, and if not more questions. So, I mean, we'll see if he can handle it. Um, I wouldn't be shocked if come. Black Monday in the NFL, he's fired, to be honest with you. Wow. Wow, spicy take. We got to write that down then. You know, they do call Ngakwe unique, the freak Ngakwe. So he does have the potential. Um, Raiders also brought back Carl Joseph to play at safety. Jake, you mentioned they lost out. So they do have, right? It's the yeah, potential is have- there, right? They have the They have the pieces to make a run. I guess we'll see. Right, if they, if they, they have John together, then Abrams also, who's a nice young safety. But if you piece him with somebody that was super solid with Joyner, yeah, he's on you know the downfall, he's older, which is why the Jets signed him to a smaller contract. But you had a solid defensive guy to help bring that defense together, but then you let him go. Why was that? I, that's that's something that baffled me. Why are you going to let a solid defensive guy that you have on your team rallies everyone together? You're just going to let him go. Don't sign him for a long-term deal. Sign him for a two, three-year deal or sign him for two, pay him a little bit more so he stays. I just don't get the moves that they made. I don't know how this is going to help them. I don't feel like it's Carr's fault. Definitely with Matt. It's definitely Gruden. And 10-year, no 10-year. He's on the hot seat. I agree with Matt. All right, we gotta see. We gotta see how it works out. They got a brand new stadium too. Beautiful place. It'd be nice to see some fans in there at least to enjoy that. They're the uh, where are they at now? Las Vegas Raiders. Man, yeah. the it's Raiders. weird to say. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about <laughs> you guys. It feels weird to say that Las Vegas Raiders. No, it does. All right, so I guess we're jumping from two teams with sort of meh quarterbacks to the Chargers who look like they've got their guy. Looks like they've got their 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 future. They've got their young pick, uh, a quarterback. They've got a brand new coach. But they were 7 and 9 last year. It feels like the Chargers have been 7 and 9 my entire life. Maybe one or two good seasons here or there. What's going to get them over the hump this year? To me, what's what's going to get them over the hump is signing offensive tackles. Uh, drafting offensive tackles. Herbert is as good as advertised. I mean, you mentioned seven and nine. A lot of those games, which, I mean, I'm there with you. It does feel like they've been seven and nine for like the last 15 years. They're in a lot of games, but there's just some reason where they just find some way to lose it. Um, I'm not sure if it's the coach. They obviously thought so, which is why he's gone. Uh, insert new head coach Brandon Staley, defense coordinator from the Rams. So we'll see what he can bring. Um, I'm not too sure if he's how he is on the offensive side um, where he's loaded. I mean, you have the weapons, but you need to protect your franchise guy. Um, that I'm a big fan of what they did in free agency. I mean, they signed Corey Lindsey from the Packers. So that, that shores up your center spot. And they took uh, Matt uh feeler i want to say his last name is a guard from the steelers so those are two guys who are going to start from day one but you do need that left tackle and thankfully this is the right draft the right year to have this need because this class is is just as good if not better than the quarterback class i mean you can literally get a guy in the first round second round i mean you don't want to wait that long but with their pick you there's no excuse you got to secure your, your guy, um, Herbert. Yeah, it's – tackle class is deep this year. They got Penny Sewell. They got Elijah Vera Tucker. You're saying that they for sure grab a left tackle then? You have to. I mean, there's really no other position on your defense. I mean, yeah, you need a linebacker. You need a corner, maybe a tight end. But in this 
in this league, we've seen that, I mean, the Chiefs showed us all you need left tackles because my guy Mahomes, although he was great throwing, you know, dimes from his knees and, you know, throwing dimes, falling out of bounds, hitting guys in the face mask, you, you need time. And you don't want to ruin Justin Herbert. He's still young. Protect him now, and he will handle the rest. Now, like you mentioned, though, that a new coach, he's, he's a defensive-minded guy. Going back to the Vikings again, not that I want to talk about them all the time, but I do want to talk about them all the time. It's hard for us to, to make Mike Zimmer pick anything but defense. He's, these defensive coaches, they want, to, they want to load up on weapons. Of course, the Chargers already have lots of weapons on defense, Bosa, Ingram, you know. Uh, who's your boy, your safety out there? Matt, there Durant. you go. Yeah, man, Durant, Durant, James. Durant James, taking it to the Potmans. But it, it's – how do you keep a defensive coach from from not licking his chops at all these defensive guys in the draft, you know? Well, that's the thing. They have such a great start already. I mean, you mentioned it. Bosa, <clears throat> like I said, they, they need a corner. They let uh, Casey Hayward go, but you do have um, – uh, he was on the Broncos last year. I can't remember his last, his last name. Corner. Uh, uh, Harris. Harris. Yeah, yep. Chris Harris. So they, but he's on the wrong side of 30. But you do have Derwin James. I like you the way have, you keep saying that, man. The wrong side of the 30. Can I mean, you? If the, shoe, if the shoe fits. Can you stop hurting my feelings? <laughs> you're good, though. I mean, you just, you just hit 30. So, man. You're on the right side for now, but it's not looking too good for you there, buddy. I'm sorry. But uh, yeah, man, I mean, they, they have a good nucleus. Uh, you got good depth, guys. Good I'll still guys. run you down. I'll still run you down. Okay. I mean, that's not really saying much, to be real with you. But I mean, we all know what happened back in. All right, year. all right. So I think we're getting, <laughs> I think we're getting off topic here. Yeah, but the uh, <laughs> Chargers, huh? <laughs> yeah, we'll 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 have to see. I do think there is a a culture there of not being clutch. They. They've been on the brink so many times. They they have teams that are chock full of talent. They just don't know how to win. I saw a stat uh, recently. I think it was this last season that they've got the most losses in games decided by less than a touchdown. So they're always there. They're in games. They're not getting blown out. They're not the Jets. But they just can't close, right? They they they're there. They're at the brink, but they just can't. They just can't bring it home. We got to see. Is the AFC I, West? Sorry. Yeah, go ahead, Jake. Um, I was going to say, I also think adding some type of wide receiver in this draft needs to happen because you have Keenan Allen, and then that's Is it. Is he on the wrong side of 30? I wouldn't they, say they got so. Mike Williams. I mean, yeah, but how long does he play? He plays, what, six games a season? He disappears. And then has, Mike yeah, Williams he has, disappears. He's got all the He has one game where you're like, oh, we got to add him, and he's he's doing great, and then – what happens the next three weeks? He's gone. He's nowhere to be found. But if Keenan Allen is gone on that offense, they don't have Henry anymore. They don't have Hunter Henry to fall back on. So who are you going to fall back on to throw? Who's that guy? Unless one of these wide receivers are going to step up. Guy in Hill, who's going to step up? Somebody has to this year. Williams, he's supposed to be great. So let's see it. Make it happen. But I wouldn't mind. Definitely like in the later rounds, third, fourth, fifth round. Grab a wide receiver. This wide receiver class is pretty deep. You can definitely grab someone, give somebody a shot to start next to Allen because, yes, he's getting up there in age, so you don't want to depend on him too much. You just want to have him when, when you need him. So you agree with Matt then? They still go D-line, but, but you're saying grab someone. Yeah, I would A little bit later in the receiver core. Definitely they had, you know, their defense struggled last year, but they also had injuries. They're one of those teams that every week got hit with a hard injury. Um, they also had a a lot of players opt out. So that defense is going to be better, but de- you, you never want to stop drafting defense. You're always going to want to keep going with your defense. You don't want to just rely on Bosa because then you run that guy down and what's going to, what's going to happen now. So is the AFC West the hardest division out there? Um, I wouldn't say so. <clears throat> uh, for me, I'm going to go the NFC West. NFC West. That's true. That's, that's the exact same team that I had as the hardest division, NFC West. 
Yeah, I mean, their quarterbacks, they're stacked. You have um, Murray, Wilson. Now you have Stafford. I mean, yeah, you have Jimmy G as the weak link, but they're set up for that number three pick to, to draft a potential franchise guy. The defenses, just the star players, J.J. Watts on the Cardinals now. Again, Stafford boosts that offense a whole lot higher than – Goff did. Goff at his best is what we're going to see them for the most part through all throughout the whole season with Stafford. Stafford's talents just got masked with how bad the Lions team was for his whole tenure there, except for when um, Megatron was still there. But it, Stafford is a game changer. So to me, the NFC West is the best and toughest division. I mean, for all I know, they all can make the playoffs. Stafford was definitely, definitely underrated. He was for sure dying in uh, in Detroit. Off topic, does Jared Goff make it in Detroit? No. I don't think so. Oh, no. both of you. No. Yeah, that, that's quick. There's no reason to make that segment long. He's just a Band-Aid. <laughs> he's really just a Band-Aid. <laughs> you know, yeah. so I wasn't really talking about if he'd make it on the field. I was talking about if Jared Goff would just make it. Like in life, living, yeah, living in. I mean, Detroit. like I mean, he fleeced the Rams, so I think he's solid. <laughs> like, <laughs> he'll figure out how to get a big contract again. Yeah. So you agree with that then? NFC West, Jake, hardest division. Yeah, um, hardest division. Cardinals added AJ Green. I really like that too. It's uh, it's it's really solid because you have Hopkins that can, you know, you can just throw it up like they did in that Hail Mary game, the Hail Murray game, if you will, um, where he just literally just lofted up to Hopkins, laughed, and then hey, they won. So it's, you know, you get AJ Green, that's solid. Let's see, let's see what the 49ers do. Kind of intrigued by that. Interesting. I don't know if I would go um, NFC West for hardest division, but I'll save that. I'll save my thoughts. Let's bring that in another episode here. It's a little bit, it's a little bit spicy, my take. Yeah. Gentlemen, let's, let's get off topic. Talk a little bit about some other NFL news going on this week. Jake, what do you see going on this week that's caught your eye? So the big news, I'm definitely going to keep it to this, the Darnold trade. I thought that was a great trade. Definitely got a and they definitely got a haul. Break it say. down. Break it down for us. What so they got the sixth round pick for this year, which really isn't anything. But next year, they're going to have a second round pick and then a fourth. That second round pick from the Panthers – could possibly be a really good pick because who's if you're going to start Sam Darnold, he's definitely not taking them to the playoffs this year. And if you start Teddy B, eh, we saw what he did last year. He's not taking them to the playoffs. So that's definitely going to be a nice second round pick. I really enjoy I, I really love that that trade. Joe Douglas is doing phenomenal. He did the same thing with the Adams deal. So I'm, I'm really happy about it. Yeah, it, to me, just like I uh, mentioned about Cam last week, if there is anything in Sam that we are not seeing, this is your year to do it. You have arguably the best running back in the league in McCaffrey. You have weapons. So it's not like it's the Jets all over again. Although, you know, Sam and Teddy B did share the quarterback room um, a season or so ago with the Jets, but this is it. I mean, you have a nice cat, uh, co head coach in Matt Rule. He's a little bit unknown, but he's not kind of one-sided to where he's going to just focus on offense, defense. He's more of a, you know, the best guy is going to play. Everyone's going to work hard. I don't care who you are. The best, you'd be the best guy on the team. But again, if there's anything in Sam Darnold, this is his year to prove I belong in this league. Yeah, I think that's a good take. He he also was in a pretty big market in New York. There's a lot of pressure on New York quarterbacks. Not not everyone that goes to New York can take that pressure. Now he's going, like you said, to the Panthers, Carolina. There's no pressure there. Which which Carolina do they even play? Does anyone know? Like, is anyone even a a fan of the Panthers outside of the Carolinas? I've never actually. So been it's a, a fan. yeah, it's a it's a small market. He does have. Uh, a few weapons he's going to get McCaffrey back so he doesn't have to be it right like you said he's he's got something 
to rely on. There was also another trade, Jimmy G. Or was there a Jimmy G trade? Have um, they gotten more rid of Jimmy rumors. G yet? It's rumors. Yeah, it's more of a rumor. Yeah. It was more of a rumor that the the Niners, which rightfully so, I get it. They're trying to their best to get a first round pick for Jimmy G. But that's definitely not going to happen. Mm. Your best bet, honestly, is draft your guy this year. Mac Jones, Justin Fields, Trey Lance, whoever it is, draft them, let them sit and hope that Jimmy G just comes out blazing and, you know, throwing dimes. So that way you set him up to look good. Then maybe next year you can trade him for a higher pick. As of right now, I mean, you would, you'd be fortunate enough to get a Carson Wentz type deal because of the contract. It's really the contract that's killing the Niners from trading him. Um, I mean, which I get it, you, you know, go get the bag if you can. And uh, Jimmy G did. He played good. He took him to the Super Bowl that one year, but it's 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 the end for him, unfortunately. So that's your best bet. Um, you're not going to get a first. I mean, you can try and Madden, but mm. that's pretty much the only way you're going to get a first is through Madden. You know, I got another question about Jimmy G, since we're since we're off topic. Is Jimmy G the most handsome quarterback in the league? I mean, let's if you want to go that route, we definitely <laughs> can. I mean <laughs> it depends we, on you know what floats your boat, but you know, if you want <laughs> we put that up on the Instagram here, get a poll going. All right, bet. We'll put a poll. All right, tell us if Jimmy G is the the best looking quarterback in the NFL. I don't really he's think he's got a much strong chin. Man. Yeah. He's got a strong chin. It does remind me, you know, crimson chin type vibes. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's all I'm going to say. He's got a strong chin, nice smile. He might be crimson chin if they ever want to make that movie into reality. Sign Jimmy up. I think he doesn't have much competition outside of Tom Brady. Maybe that's why, maybe that's why he's not in New England anymore. They got rid of him. Uh, Edelman, too. That's some news that caught my eye since I'm on the wrong side of 30. Edelman, too. Rumors that he might miss the season. His, uh, his knees are acting up. His Achilles, I don't know. His hip, maybe arthritis getting him. Everything. <laughs> just, just body yeah. shutting down. No, I, I think the report said that if he, he wouldn't be able to play a full season with his knees. Like, it, it's just not going to happen. So, so how's that affecting what the Patriots are doing out there? To be honest, I really feel like the way they handled free agency – they signed a couple. They they signed two good receivers. Got the two tight ends set going. I really don't see where Edelman fits in here. I think they just keep him because he's a New England guy, just out of respect. But I really don't see him seeing the field. Maybe for clutch moments to get some guy down the field. But I think that's about it. Yeah, until they release him and then he signs with the Bucks and re- reminds everyone who he is. Yeah, and then he takes some injections in the knees and he's good to go. Yeah. But I think it's I think it's it. I mean, try to give it a go again. I mean, try to play spot duty. I don't really see any reason to kind of keep him around. I mean, you have Bourne and Aguilar, uh, Aguilar who are kind of the same. They're faster. They're more of your deep threat. I know Edelman likes to work in, you know, that slot, you know, underneath, check down type stuff. Second best slot guy in the league behind Adam Thielen. At least you admit he's a slot guy. Oh, he's definitely a slot guy. <laughs> but he can work outside, too. <laughs> well, fellas, I think that wraps us up for the NFL here. Let us know in the comments below. Do you agree with our assessment of the AFC West? Is it the Chiefs to lose? Is John Gruden at fault? Can the Chargers ever get above 7-9? and nine? Let us know. Let us know your thoughts, especially if you're a fan. We really appreciate it. We're going to jump into the NBA in a little bit, but we're going to take a break here away from our sponsor. This episode is sponsored by The Polyfro. The Polyfro is your one-stop shop for accessories and styling tools. The Polyfro combines the love of hair and the Polynesian culture to present to you hand-picked products that add the perfect touch to any outfit. This is a perfect gift for the special someone in your life or ladies, a nice way to treat yourself. Head over to thepolyfro.com to shop now. All right, fellas. Again, thank you very much to thepolyfro.com. 
go check her out. Get something for yourself, something for your lady. Matt, you got some curls going on there. It seems like you've already visited the polypro.com. <laughs> uh, yeah, I like to call myself the poly bro. Mm. Oh, so, oh, I like that. You like, like it, that. Like that. I'm trying to change like that. We changed that contact name. We changed that contact name. Yeah, you know, poly bro. But this just happens when you're, you know, naturally. This is oh. just all natural right here. Oh, hey. All right. We got to tell the polyfro.com to go ahead and set up a men's division there, the poly bro. We like that. Yeah, have, Matt, have Matt's uh, big old head of hair be the main pictures yeah, on the website. <laughs> I'm model. But we're a small podcast. We love supporting small businesses. Hit us up in our DMs on Instagram if you'd like to partner with us. Fellows are moving into the NBA now. Divisions. Now, divisions don't really matter in the NBA. I don't think most people even realize that there are divisions in the NBA, right? You got the Mount. What are the names of the divisions either? Why is it that <laughs> NBA divisions don't matter, gentlemen? Why is that? Honestly, I don't. I can't remember a, a name of a division. I don't. I couldn't really tell you who are in the divisions. Um, I don't know why they don't matter. I mean, they don't really stress them enough like they do the NFL, you know, division games. Oh, this is a big game because it's, divi- it's not the same for the NBA. I don't understand why. It's more for a conference. Um, it's just those eight teams trying to get into the playoffs in the East and the West. But I don't – I really don't understand why they don't matter. You don't really hear, oh, the – I don't know, Brooklyn Nets or the whatever their division is called, the winners for this year. Like, that's not something teams are hyped about. It's let me make the playoffs. And then, you know, from there, uh, me personally, I get, you know, I would definitely still keep it East West. But to me, if you if you really want to spice it up, I would go full on March Madness tournament style. Mm, interesting. Yes, I had to look it up, too. Here are the divisions in the West. You've got the Northwest, the Pacific, the Southwest. In the Eastern, you've got the Central, Atlantic, the Southeast. But now, the both of you, you're two big NBA guys. You don't even know divisions. You think <laughs> you think just strike them out then? I would. And just yeah. conference? Yeah, yeah just yeah. strike them out. Yeah. Yeah. You know how long it took me to find the divisions? Like, it wasn't something immediately that popped up. You literally have to just go ahead and, like, if you type in Google right now, NBA divisions, it only shows the conferences. Hmm. So that even tells you, like, they're not even – it's not something that pops up. I definitely think, like Matt said, try to figure out something. You're obviously going only conference. Like, even now, the way they did it last year with the play-in for the bubble, you had the top eight seeds made it. And then you had – or the top six or seven, and you had to fight for that last seed. So you had, like, the teams that were in ninth and tenth seed had a play-in. And they were able to see if they can play for a spot in the playoffs. I kind of like that. It felt kept it competitive, kept it going. Definitely some type of tournament situ- situational style would be good. So since divisions don't matter, then why don't we break down the conferences, gentlemen? Top four teams in each conference. Let's start out East. East is the best. Sixers at the top of the East right now. What do you think, Matt? You uh, used to be a Sixers fan. Trust the process was your motto. You trust in the process they got going out there? If they can hit the three ball, I would say yes, trust the process. Uh, Curry has been hurt. Um, he's a pretty good three-point shooter. Danny Green they have on the team. I mean, we all know Danny Green. He's hot and cold. Uh, the new version of J.R. Smith, one game he's going to hit eight. Next game he's going to go 0 for 8. Um they have good, nice talent. Uh, Matisse Thibault is a really underrated guy that a lot, of peop- a lot of people don't know about because he's kind of, you know, in the background of the Joel and Beads and um, Ben Simmons of the world. Um, if Joel and Bead returns to how he was before the injury, and they can get Curry back um, and hit the three ball consistently, they will have a shot. If they don't get the three ball, the three ball for them will be really key come playoff time. If they can't get the three ball to hit, it's 
they'll probably make second round and that's it. So Sixers are leading the conference right now, but it's, it seems like everyone's talking about the number two team, the Nets here. The Nets. Are the Nets taking the conference, Jake? It could happen. Um, but last night's game was kind of surprising. Embarrassing. Yeah. Um, Lakers didn't have LeBron, Anthony Davis, or Kuzma. And they steamrolled the Nets. That was very surprising to me. And that's something that I talked about in our last, in our test podcast, actually, it was that you have a team like the Lakers have that chemistry, that connection together without their two stars, LeBron and AD, and they steamrolled the Nets. Imagine sure. if LeBron and AD were there. Just imagine a seven game series of that. What's going to happen? And KD played. It wasn't like KD wasn't playing. KD played. Aldridge played, Griffin played. So what's what's going on? That yeah. that that was bad. That yeah, was there was, very, there was really no ex, no excuse. I mean, as a LeBron fan, I absolutely loved it. Um, but you had a team, the Lakers. I mean, uh, Dennis Schroeder and Kyrie got ejected. So the Nets were the better team on paper. So you would think they're easily going to win. But I mean, you had. Ben McLemore go off. I think he had seven, eight threes. Um, the others, THT, Alex Caruso, Montrezl Harrell. I mean, they all stepped up big time. But, I mean, the Lakers were no AD, no Braun, no Kuzma, no Wesley Matthews, no Marc Gasol. They were really shorthanded. So, and to get a big W like that on the road, I mean, granted, that doesn't really carry any weight because of the lack of fans. But that's still big. So if the Nets can't win now, can they really even make it out of the East come playoff time when they run into teams that are ready to make a run, teams that are experienced? I think for so. Instance, for instance, Bucks coming up next, number three team. Matt, you expressed a concern about Sixers shooting the ball, shooting the three ball. Bucks can shoot the three ball. They got a big man down there. They got Giannis. They got Chris Middleton outside. They got Drew Holiday. Why not the Bucks to win? Because Giannis has yet to take that superstar, I am here type leap in the playoffs. He is great in the regular season. He will even kind of be good come first round of the playoffs. I mean, granted, I knew, I know in the bubble he got hurt, but even before he got hurt, the Miami Heat just manhandled him. And the the Bucks are a lot bigger than they are. I mean, you have Bam, who's a six foot eight center. It feels like we're in the 80s again, and you have six foot eight guys who play center who's manhandling the Greek freak. So it's to me, yes, the team is there. Uh, Drew Holiday's there playing their point guard. So it's a, a big um, investment at, the, at your point. But Giannis has to show us that he's got next, that he's got now. And be able to take over when it, when it matters, play defense. I mean, you're going to, it's going to be him and KD if they, if they play. And uh, it's just, again, he's, he's got to make that leap of I'm next. And, but he just hasn't shown me that lately. Hmm. That's interesting. Jake, you agree with that? Giannis needs to take that step in the playoffs. Yeah. Cause think about it. If it comes down to it, you're talking about the closeout games, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Giannis is, you know, has the ball. They're down two. What are you, what are you gonna do? I'd rather you take your free throws and try to drive in the lane. So I'm gonna foul you, because we've we've seen the free throws. Sometimes he misses them also. Any type of jump shot isn't consistent. So if yeah. I'm down, if if I'm up three, up four, I'm and Giannis has the ball, yeah, I'm letting you shoot or I'm fouling you so you don't try to drive into the lane. That it's simple as that. We're we're gonna play that game. So when it comes out to those closeout games, I don't know what you can do. Cause yeah, you have Drew Holiday, but I don't, I don't, it's very difficult. I don't see the Bucks really managing anything. Let's jump over to the Hawks. Not to cut you off, but I don't uh I agree with you. I don't see the Bucks doing much. Uh, I think I think their only experience, solid, solid experience is Chris Middleton, Drew Holiday. 
have they have they won it all? Have they uh, carried a team on their back? No. So, like you said, they got solid pieces, but got to see it come playoff time. It's almost like that Dan Marino situation, right? Great, great regular season and fell apart playoffs. The Hawks now, now, now they surprised me. Someone who's not really an NBA fan to see them doing so well this season. Yeah, they got the pieces. They got Clint Capella, Bogdan, Bogdanovich, Bogdan, Danilo even. Of course, we got Trey Young with the worst haircut in the league. How, how is it that the Hawks are doing so amazingly? Uh, I'll tell you what. That man, Trey Young, he's he's different. He is different. I would not be surprised if we're talking about not even two or three seasons down the line. We're talking about him being one of the top point guards in the NBA. He's young. I get it. but. For him to do what he's doing with that Hawks team, like you said, he has a good supporting cast, but it's not like he has a huge number two to rely on. They're just a solid supporting cast. But he's a guy that, hey, my supporting cast is here for me. They're doing their thing, but I need to carry the team on my back. Let me drop a quick 10 real, real fast. Then he'll do that. And that's the difference between him and Giannis. Yeah, Giannis can drop you you know, a quick eight, drive to the lane real fast. But if I need to step back, hit a couple threes, cause some trouble, you know, everyone's going to crash the corner three, wherever he goes to take the three, corner, wing, wherever it is. You're going to leave your other guys open. And you have a guy like Danilo who can take three. It's He has a really good supporting cast. I really like that Hawks team going forward. It's going to be a nice, nice team. Yeah, I would agree just, to, you know, to kind of wrap the Hawks up. Um, they just really needed number two. Um, that's, that's really it. A number two, who can get you a good 20, 25 a night. Um, but who can also play some good defense doesn't have to be elite defense, but good enough. But yeah, that's, that's really all they're missing. Um, to me, besides the haircut, Trey Young might be a second coming of Steph. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was actually going to be my next question. Do you think these, uh, these young kids who have grown up seeing, a Ray Allen, a Reggie Miller, a Steph, these these young kids that that aren't afraid to pull up and shoot, is that going to be what takes over the league? 100%. I think it's already taken over. Yeah. 100%. Um, to, I'm going to shed a small little light. I, I coached middle school basketball for like a small period of time. When I tell you fast break scenarios, all these kids want to do is shoot the three it's because of Steph. I can't say Ray Allen. I can't say Reggie because of the time era. We're more so Ray Allen and, and Reggie. But for kids now and how the Warriors won their championships, I mean, Steph's pulling up from half court in meaningful games. It's not like it's the, the regular season. I mean, before KD, you know, joined the the Warriors, my guy pulled up from half court in front of, what was it, uh, Robertson's face? for the game so teams guys see that young guys see that and that's all they want to do now everyone wants to shoot the three i mean i get it it's it's how the game goes it, whoever's winning the championship how they how they win it is what people are going to emulate yeah let's wrap up the east then uh, there's um there's a lot here we've got experience in the nets which somehow has fallen apart we got big power with the bucks but no no real playoff history here and the up and comers with the Hawks. Who's, who's taking this division? Any of these four teams or, or are we looking at Dark Horse? I'm I say the Nets. Yeah, I say Nets too. If anything, a team that I see, you know, taking control and showing something would be the Celtics just because they have, they have the team. They just haven't been clicking lately. But just side note, I just checked the box score for tonight's game. They definitely clicked today. Uh, Denver only had eight points in the fourth quarter. The Celtics steamrolled the Nuggets. So if they can pull pull it together, keep things going, I can definitely see them making a run. Let's jump over to the West, gentlemen. Uh, now here, here's my squad. This is what I like to see. Jazz, number one, number one seed currently. Are they going to hold that? Are they 
going to take it from your vaulted Lakers, Matt? Uh, yeah, they will. I mean, but don't sleep on the Suns. I will say this. Do not sleep on the Suns. CP3. Now, wait a minute. Wait a, a minute. Wait a minute. This is the jazz section, and you're talking about the Suns? <laughs> yes. Again, like I, like I mentioned last week in our test pod, yes, the jazz. We love Donovan Mitchell. Rudy Gobert, yeah, but it's like, come on, bro, it's the Jazz. All right, is anyone playing? Let us know in the comments. Is anyone playing with the Utah Jazz? I don't think you are. You don't have to lie to us. You don't got to lie to PJ. Just no one's really playing with these guys. But the Suns, CP3 is a franchise savior. Look what he did with, with the Thunder. Everyone thought they were down and out. They still, you know, hung around. Now he, he gets, you know, to sign with uh, Devin Booker, which to me is he might be one of the best guys in the league. He's so underrated and it's sickening how bad he doesn't get as much credit as he should, which I get it. Phoenix is a small market. They haven't really been great since the Steve Nash and Mari Stoudemire days, but I'll, I'll give it to the Jazz for now because they're there. I mean, yeah, they deserve it. I mean, to, as a LeBron fan, I mean, this year it doesn't really matter about getting first round, you know, first seed. I just need them to get healthy. So you don't see in a playoff matchup Jazz moving past the Lakers? Not if healthy, no. There's absolutely no way. That's funny. Against this current team now, <laughs> if, if you know, LeBron and AD don't come back, there's a good ch- there's a good chance and they probably do advance, but AD LeBron come back. I mean, boy LeBron again. I say that like I'm close with LeBron. He posted on social media about there's a storm coming. I think LeBron knows that him and AD are extremely close to being back. I would not be shocked if they could play now. They're just obviously waiting, which is the smart. I think they're on a, a East road trip. I wouldn't be shocked that after that East road trip they that they come back. Interesting. It's interesting because I asked you to talk about the Jazz and you talked about the Suns and the Lakers, the disrespect to the number one seed, but that's just how it goes, man. I'll move on. Since we're talking about the Suns, let's break them down. You know, I'm, I'm happy to see their success, man. Devin Booker, he's, he's just one of those likable guys. He's been working for years and just dying out there in Phoenix. It, it, it's nice to see him finally get rewarded, Jake. Yeah, I think Devin Booker is, um, is phenomenal. There's, It's ridiculous on what this man can do. And CP3, like Matt said, he just put everything together. Book needed a guy like that. Maybe not as star-powered as CP3, who can literally carry the team if he has to for a night, but just a guy to deflect to – run the offense a little bit. And that gives Booker the room to do what he needs to do, which is just put the ball in the hole. That's it. Put the ball in the net and that's it. I'm going to score, do what I got to do. And CP3 can run the offense. That's a guy they needed. And I'm happy to see Book succeed in that. You know, I think the key here is, uh, is Jay Crowder, man. Former, former Utah Jazz. Okay. <laughs> I'm just All right. you know, also former Miami heat guy. So. Yeah, yeah. Right. At least I feel like to the heat first. Man. I feel like oh, we man. disrespected the jazz too much. That I'm, I'm just gonna stink the jazz into every segment that we <laughs> that we talk about from now on. Clippers. Clippers are number three. And <laughs> All right, let's move on. Let's move I mean, on to the Nuggets. Then. Yes, nice. Yeah, uh, cool. But, Clippers but, are number three. Tell we me your feelings. Uh, you want to take this, Matt? I mean, it's all right. It's this, again. This is one of those teams where they don't really care about the seeding. Just see me come playoff time, and we will because our last taste of Clipper basketball was. Paul George hitting the side of the, the basket. <laughs> Pandemic P was born in the bubble. I don't know if it was the, the you know, the cornrows. I don't know if he thinks it's the early 2000s. We try to be like little Bow Wow again. But, man, it's it, – we'll just see. I mean, again, Rondo, playoff Rondo is a real thing. Um, 
but it is it's really nothing for me with them at number three. Yeah, um, I don't I don't see the Clippers doing anything with that duo. Um, they they have an opt out after the season, I, if I'm not mistaken. And I could definitely see um, Kawhi picking somewhere else to go. Uh, it's not working out. Paul George is great for the regular season, but like you, we see in the playoffs, it's not happening. He's not a guy you rely on. He's a good number three for the playoffs. That's probably a hot take, but I think that's how it is. I don't, I don't think the Clippers are going to be anything to worry about. I'm just looking forward to Kawhi at media day again, just trying to get some more, some more. <laughs> out of Boy. Um. I mean, it's just more question you have to ask me um, in order for me to tell you about myself. I just can't give you a whole spiel. I don't even know where you're sitting at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, man, that kills yeah, me every time. Need, but I also need more fun guy, Kawhi. When they win a championship a with the Raptors, I need, I need fun guy, uh, Kawhi. All right, so... What we've learned so far is the Jazz get no respect. The Clippers get disrespect. <laughs> because of Pandemic Pete. Pandemic Pete, I didn't even get his name right. And uh, okay. <laughs> and Kawhi here. What about the Nuggets? What can we expect from the Nuggets? Now, they've, they've got some power here, though. Uh, the Joker? He... he, he uh, he bodies some people up there. Uh, I've seen I've seen him move his weight around. I don't know. He's he's about three hundred and fifty pounds, and and he moves like it. But but he puts some moves on people. Jamal Murray's out there. What are we seeing? The great Michael Porter. To me, they have a really good overall team. Um, like you said, Porter. They got Gordon now. Um, Murray, the Joker. You know, it's a really good team. Might be a tad bit better with the addition of Aaron Gordon, but again, to me, it's it's just about playoffs. I mean, they they did really good in the bubble, but I don't know. I I just need to know that it wasn't because of the lack of fans being there that Jamal Murray showed up. That I think Joker's good. I think he's legit. I don't think it's a oh because nobody was there, he was able to really just focus and you know ball out, but. Porter Jr. is going to be big. If he can, you know, deliver a good 20, 25, not every night, just here and there, like him and Aaron Gordon kind of pick and choose their nights, you know, take turns. I mean, if they're both going to go off for 25 a night at the same time, that's even better. Um, but those two are, to me, are what's really going to take the Nuggets over top. I mean, they, they made it to the Western Conference Finals um, against the Lakers. It's just that they were so shorthanded of – experience that that's just you know that was the case there with why they didn't make it all the way yeah we seem to be hearing that a lot it seems to be a common thread as you're breaking down this these conferences here the lack of playoff experience really leads to the guys with the experience the lebrons the the ad's to to start taking over so who's taking the conference gentlemen let's get some consensus here and this is pretty easy. I'm going to just say the Lakers. The Jazz. This yeah. guy. Well, the only reason I don't say the Lakers taking the conference is because of where they're at right now. But I see them. Like, you're talking about when the season ends, who's going to be leading the conference or who's going to be in the conference finals? If you're saying conference finals, it's definitely Lakers. I say Lakers Nuggets. Yeah, if, now playoffs started about... now, if the playoffs started now, the Lakers would be playing the Nuggets. Yeah, I'm just trying to wrap my head, I guess, around the disrespect to the to the Utah Jazz. But that's something that but we'll just have to see how it plays out. I feel like you can just wait for that the comments. There's something that we could put a little wager on because I'd love to see you Jokers lose something here. I don't know. Shout me out as as the best of the regular guys when the when the Jazz take off here. But let's get off topic, gentlemen. There's some news in the NBA that we want to talk about. Lonzo's on fire lately from the three, Jake. What do you what are you seeing different here with Lonzo? I think it's just the confidence in the new form. He came out with it last season to start off the year. 
And just, you know, his team is constantly telling him, shoot the ball, shoot the ball. Come on. You got J.J. Redick, especially one of the best three-pointers in the game. He's telling him, when you get that shot and it's open, take it, take it, take it, take it. And as we can see, he dropped eight threes last week in one of the, in one of the games. It was a career high for him. He's going to be a free agent this year, so it's definitely something to look out for. I, I like Lonzo. I think LaMelo is going to be better. But definitely Lonzo is going to be a piece that a team's going to be looking forward to add. So let me ask you, do you think some of his motivation came from uh, despite Melo's injury, the fact that Melo's having such a good season, he's in the running for rookie of the year. Do you think maybe his dad's telling him he's not the favorite son anymore because of Melo? Is that, <laughs> I mean, is his brother I motivating him to, to succeed? It could definitely be like some type of family competition. Like LaMelo could definitely be telling him on the side, like, you know, just brotherly talk. He's trash. Look what I'm doing. I came into the league, not even a full season. I'm out. I'm hurt. And I'm probably still top three for rookie of the year. Like, that's, that's wild. Like, that's definitely some type of family competition going on. But I also think it's that just confidence in his shot. Because he there, there was no doubt that he could score. He could, you know, make plays. But that shot just wasn't consistent. And I think it is now. So I think it's going to work for him. Yeah, man. I'd love to uh, love to see that family dynamic play out a little more there. There's also some news, not not NBA necessarily, but our sisters over in the M- WNBA, our sisters over in the WNBA. I don't know what kind of segue that was, but the <laughs> ladies of the WNBA, they're getting they're getting some jersey refreshes here. Um, yeah, I I feel like those old 1980s Liberty graphics. Exactly. It was time, huh? It was time for a refresh, Jake. Yeah, I'm happy that Nike stepped up um, and gave them gave them some love, gave them some new gear. Not just not just the jerseys, but they they got I think like three or four different type of additions for the jerseys. So it's not just a home and away. They have plenty of options to choose from. I love it. Get them some love. Get them some respect. It's just well deserved. Yeah, I, I do think women's basketball is is very highly slept on, especially college basketball, man. They, they got that girl out there, Paige Buckets, they call her. She oh, kills, she's man. The next, yeah, yeah, she's the next best thing. Yeah, and, she uh, kills. Diana Taurasi already says so. And if you want, if you watch or even know somewhat of WNBA, uh, Taurasi is probably the GOAT, at least right now, is, as far as terms of WNBA. But I watched something where she said that she's the best right now, and she's not in it in the league. Yeah. And um, I had to watch some of her. I mean, I saw a little bit of her when she was uh, in high school. But yeah, she's she makes a lot of the hard things look easy. And when you can do that as a freshman, it's. I mean, I can only imagine what she's gonna do when she gets drafted. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and. Uh... The girls over there at Baylor too. I I, I did catch some of that game. It, it seems like WNBA does have a a pretty good rise in from them. There, they got some talent here. They it seems like they might be on the upswing. It. Let me ask you fellows a question here, real quick. Since we're off topic, you have uh, you have four billion dollars. You buying a WNBA team? Jake. I would. Matt. Yeah. I would. Yeah. I had to think about it a little bit. It's four billion dollars. That's yeah, yeah, let me, yeah. Let me think about that real quick. Uh, Jake said he's buying something yeah. else for four billion dollars. Yeah. Buying an island, <laughs> couple houses. But I think it's. I think it's a great investment. It's definitely on the rise. Yeah. Yeah, I bring that up because it seems like A Rod's in talks to buy a WNBA team. So it will be interesting to see how that that shakes up the WNBA. Well, I think I think we're wrapping up with the with the NBA here, gentlemen, and we're moving on to a section that we like to call the hype. So this is where we talk about anything, anything at all that that has us hyped this week, this month. Uh, we'd love to hear what you're hyped about too in the comments. Maybe we'll talk about it next time. Uh, something that that has us all hyped, gentlemen, is Space Jam. Now, I grew up, you know me. On the wrong side of 30, like Matt said, I grew up with <laughs> with the OG Space Jam on the VHS, looking up to Jordan, battling the Monstars. 
Definitely it's, looking up. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be hard for me to to find something that tops Space Jam. But you know me, right? I'm the I'm the antique here. I like things the old way, man. I love I love the 16 game season. I hate that they added an extra game to the NFL. I'm I'm old school. Do you think the new Space Jam will match up at all? The new character redesigns even? The Babs? What what are you guys thinking here? I think it will. And I was just hoping that there's a couple of things I was hoping when they they came out and said they were going to make this. One, LeBron was going to be a better actor. If you've seen LeBron in like other movies, it's been horrible. So with the, the trailer, he seems pretty good at it. Um, but the one thing that I saw was it's not just the Looney Tune universe. It seems like it's kind of like all different types of universes, comic. I mean, I think we, if you look at the, the trailer, you saw guys like Batman, Penguin. Um, there were so many other like uh, people there in the background as the crowd. It looked better. I mean, they CGI my, my boy LeBron's hairline, thankfully. Oh. Uh, I'm trying, <laughs> trying to see that. So I, I think it's going to be good, and it's a different storyline. If they came and said, we're just going to use LeBron, same storyline, and it's like, okay, this isn't any better. It's just newer. But nothing I'm, – I'm there with you when it comes to some movies. Sometimes the original can never be touched. Um, you know, we'll always remember – you know, the, the first Space Jam, um, seeing I Believe I Can Fly at the end. So, but I, I think it'll be good. Yeah, we got summer yeah. release ahead of us. A lot to see, gentlemen. Jake? Yeah, I'm excited for the Space Jam. I think it's because I do agree with you also. If something's great, why mess with it? And the first, the original Space Jam was great. And I don't think it's something to say that this is the second Space Jam. I think this is just another Space Jam with another type of NBA guy that is probably and arguably on the same level as Michael Jordan was in his time. Of this is got to stop the disrespect here. That's a different topic. I'm saying, topic. That's a I'm different saying topic. this disrespect. Right, this difference, just let me, in our <laughs> era, in the era of us, LeBron is what Michael Jordan was. That's what I'm trying to get at. So it makes sense if you're going to make a movie with a guy like that. I'm excited for it. I like it. And to touch on what Matt said, they're using every, I want to say, Warner Brothers, like production type movies. Any movie that Warner Brothers was attached with, movie shows, those characters are showing up. When I saw Iron Giant, my heart hurt. I was like, that was my movie. I loved Iron Giant growing up. And then you saw the Flintstones. Like, that was great. I'm excited for it. Yeah, I think... I think that's something that we all look forward to, man. They got uh, Gabriel Iglesias there, Speedy Gonzalez too. I think I think he's gonna be. <laughs> I, I mean, I gotta say props to whoever had the the gall to call this guy and cast him as a Mexican mouse because that that felt like <laughs> some overt racism there. But I'm glad that he signed up for it, man. That's that's gonna be a good role. Yeah, we got a lot to look forward to. That's that's what I'm hype about. Matt, tell me what you're hype about. So one thing that I'm hype about, and he will be here next Thursday, and that is uh, my dog. I am getting a German Shepherd. We were able to see him yesterday. And this sucker is, he is big. You would think we stole a Mama Bear's cup. A cub. I said cub. Cub when you see him so it's i mean if you've ever gotten a, a puppy this will be my first ever dog uh puppy so this is all new for me so i'm pretty hyped about it you know who's not hyped the people who live in your neighborhood that were thinking about robbing your house now yeah they see that you have totally, an eight foot tall dog yeah it's it's who eats people don't even bother i think you're safe now buddy yeah i, I should be you should name that dog Brinks or ADT or some type of security system, man, because <laughs> I think you're good. Jake, what do you have about? Um, Saturday, there's some new shoes coming out. I'm super excited for those. Uh, Matt talked about it on our test episode. Um, hopefully, I don't take that L. Looking forward to getting those shoes. And 
just excited about this podcast, to be honest. A lot has been put into it. Um, you know, we're really excited about it. You know, our intro music, for example, that was something super nice. Um, it was a did it for us. Um, his name's Derek. Shout out to my boy, Derek. He killed it with that. I hit him up real fast. Hey, can I get an intro? Yeah, what are you looking for? And within 10 minutes, dude sent me three beats. And they Derek were absolutely got it quick, man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely <laughs> phenomenal. I'm super happy about it and that he's supporting us. So I'm absolutely hyped about this podcast, something we've been wanting to do. And I'm just happy about it and excited. Yeah, leave a comment below if you, if you uh, had to rewind and listen to that intro again. Matter of fact, go back, listen to that intro beat again. This guy made this in in eight minutes in in a house robe and slippers, man. Derek is Derek is talented. <laughs> so we we thank you again very much for listening. Uh, we did run a little bit long today. Probably won't be this long uh, next time, but we had a lot to say. There was a lot to break down. We're going to break down another division in the NFL next week. We're going to talk about more NBA news, possibly see if I can convince these guys to give me a full segment on the jazz and why the disrespect to the jazz should not be tolerated. Yeah, I'm not going to be here. I got, I got, something, something came up. I got an appointment. I'll be. Playing. <laughs> we'll have to see. Also, let us know what NFL division should we break down next year, next week, next year. Sheesh. Be here. Be here next week, next year. We're glad. Again, if you're a small business, hit us up in the DMS. We'd love to, have you as well as a sponsor. Yeah, and I'd just like to say the closing words is uh, our first official episode. So if you're listening to this on, on YouTube, please make sure you uh, like, subscribe, turn on post notifications. Uh, I also want to give a small shout out uh, to my cousin Alexis, who's also been a, a major help in our uh, building of our podcast um, with the ideas and such. So um Stay tuned. I mean, this is this is the beginning of hopefully a beautiful outcome. Yeah, and uh, look for us for wherever you stream your podcasts. We're going to be on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and hopefully some more in the future. So that's exciting also. Thanks for listening, regulars. We are the regular guys. We'll see you next week. Peace! Regular Guys Podcast.